Think about your grocery shopping. I dread it. I think most people actually dread it. Now, what if you could order your groceries and pick them up, say curbside like a Kroger? Don't you already anticipate that's going to be a little bit more expensive? When you have these preconceived notions about services, that service in particular, all the things that would help you with, it's going to come with some incremental costs. How do you break down these barriers to actually show that just because something's a little bit more expensive doesn't mean that the convenience has an offset that? Even further, how do you break down a barrier if it's not even true? Well, today we're going to talk about a in Mailbag Monday. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about a member who has started a company that not only makes it convenient to pick up your groceries, it's actually more cost effective in the long run to actually order and have these groceries and buy them and you're going to be saving money. So it is a cost effective way to be ordering your groceries. And then not only that, but it's convenient. Sounds too good to be true, but it's truly a brilliant concept. And I was, you know, this is a very good one. So uh, welcome to Mailbag Monday. I'm Nick Williams and uh, let's hop in. Welcome to another episode of Mailbag Monday. I'm Nick Williams, founder and principal consultant. We're going to jump straight into it. But before we do, make sure that whether you're listening to this or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to subscribe, like and comment, share our information uh, and hit the notif- notification bell if you are watching this. And if you're listening, be sure to go ahead and go to iTunes and leave us a review. It helps us and it helps us understand what we're doing, what we're doing right, what we can be doing better. So all of that information helps. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you engaging with the content. So let's get into it. The question comes from David and his question is, Uh, Nick, thanks for all that you do. We are a company that has a lot of balls in the air. How do you actually tell a story that makes sense for your company when you have to think about things like value chain, you have to think about things like uh, customer logistics, you have to think about driver logistics. How do you actually tell stories that make sense to your customers when there's so many sophisticated things going on? So. David, that's a good question. And uh, it's it's taking a look at your company. So he actually started, founded a company uh, called Food Forced. And it's an app that focuses on logistics and helps people conveniently find uh, their nearest pickup location and gives a cost saving, um, cost effective solution to people who want to order their food in advance and pick it up. So David, taking a look at your site, and this applies to anyone who has some piece of their business or their entire operations that they think are too, uh, from a logistic standpoint, or they feel that, you know, this isn't right for me. How does marketing actually help? Uh, how does consumer behavior actually help my business? Um, we have so many things it does. We're a finance company, whatever, that, like whatever the case may be, blah, blah. So, um, you could have a lot of reasons. And this is a good example because this is one that you wouldn't, is not a prototypical, perfect quintessential candidate for consulting, but looking at David's, um, looking at his company page, I I think he suffers from what other people do too. When you have a very advanced logistical nightmare, you have to explain to people and there's a high educational barrier. Uh, their people tend to go the other way. They just don't even bother getting into what their company does. And I'm going to lay out a very simple model that you can do. So there's three things. There's the, uh, the who, why, what model that we're going to talk about that I, you know, when you create your content, so it's a content play, there's a content piece of the pillar. So who, what, why, or who, why, what, then, um, we're actually also going to touch, uh, some component of getting personal. So looking at your business model, you lack a personal touch. And I think a personal touch to the price conscious consumer is going to matter. And the third thing that we're going to talk about is giving the consumer, like incentivizing their use. And so whether that's giving them a free credit or giving them a free order up to $10, you need to, you need to incentivize them to use it and see the convenient, how convenient it actually is. So your value proposition is based on being convenient and it's about food ordering, ordering their food online, groceries, um, being ordered online. It's something Amazon pantry has struggled with. It's a problem and it's difficult to get people to start ordering rice on, you know, on their food app because people tend to associate ordering online with being a little bit more premium. There's an upcharge or they'll automatically think if you're ordering it online, well, it's going to be expensive food. Why would you order cheap food online and pick it up? That's not reserved for that. So you have to break that barrier. You are up against the barrier looking at the consumer research and the uh, industry analysis. So we're going to touch on that. So the first, the who, why, what model, um, when you're making your content, you need to focus on who you, who this is for, 
why they should be paying attention and what's in it for them. What is this actual product you're talking about? And I would do it in that order. When people look to actually, you know, read something, learn something, download something, they want to know, okay, um, is this even for me? Why, why is this for me? And what am I getting? What is this? So when you're making your content, when you're, you're explaining what the hotspots are, for example, it's, it's something he's branded in terms of his pickup locations, explain what it is. Who is this app for? Uh, is it something that's easy to get? Is it something that all people should have? And then why should they be, why should they be downloading it? Talk about the, in terms of the logistical um, algorithm you have at play, it's obviously proprietary, but explain to them why that makes their life so convenient and why convenient grocery shopping matters to them. And then what are they, what are they actually getting it? What are they getting themselves into? What does the app give them access to? So that's that point. Um, the second point is we're going to talk about getting personal. So instead of you doing all the selling, a price conscious consumer wants to see that it actually works. It's not someone saying, look, this makes your life convenient and it's cost effective. Get some very personal interviews and talk and let them talk about uh, how this is actually price conscious, how they save money, how this has affected their life. So get personal. I would get testimonials of people who truly genuinely have benefited from this. Instead of you doing all the selling, let the candor and how genuine it is and how much it has actually helped someone's life. Let it come from the person because you're not going to be able to sell someone on that value. You can't sell that kind of life transformation just through something as simple as, you know, an arbitrary and habitual as grocery shopping. You have to show that this really did help someone and you can't be the one saying it. They have to. So get very personal, get testimonials. I would get three, I'd record them and I'd make it more of a conversation if you have to, but let other people do the talking for you. And thirdly, this is one that's going to be, you're breaking the barrier, right? Like this is something that's, that's very difficult for people to do is to buy groceries online and then not also accept and expect some sort of premium charge. So you need to somehow motivate people to actually down and use this app. So first of all, download it. So I would, I would incentivize a download and then give them a free credit and say, go pick it up because the benefit, the true benefit and value in your service is how convenient it is to pick something up. So what better way to do that? And you're going to lose some money in the, on the beginning, at the beginning, but you really have to do the math to look at what is your customer acquisition? What is your retention rate? What is the actual close rate? And also compare that to what, what happens if I throw this out there and no one downloads. So give them free credits up to, it could be something very simple. You just have to make them go pick it up and show them how convenient it is. If there's a hotspot less than a mile away and the nearest Kroger's 10 minutes away, and it's someone who's very busy and they're price conscious. They don't have the they don't have the time and the luxury and the discretionary income to go get gas and then you know drive along the way and then go pick up some other things. No, they're very intentional with their shopping. So give them a reason to download it and go pick things up and let them see for themselves. But you need to erode the risk and eliminate that barrier of inconvenience. And the best way to do that is to incentivize and give them a credit or two. And it could be very cheap. A lot of companies do this. This is exactly how Dropbox got started. So the who, why, what content model, get very personal with your testimonials. And then that third one, incentivize the download and give them a reason, erode that risk and, and that barrier, and just let them go pick something up very cheap and show them how convenient it is. So a lot of this is going to be showing and not so much saying, let them see for themselves. And that's how you really break down these big barriers. So hopefully that was helpful. And if it was, uh, if you have any questions, be sure to reach out at Nick Williams at deepbridgeconsulting.com. Make sure to subscribe uh, to the podcast. Make sure to subscribe uh, and download. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube and um, we'll see you next Monday for Mailbag Monday, but be sure to check out our Whiteboard Wednesday and our Final Friday. We have content coming from all angles. So we will, uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.